Welcome to another installment of Friday q and I hope you guys have all had a great week. I hope you've all had a chance to play some guitar and do a bit of practice. And if you haven't, just pick up your guitar and do this. Just play an A chord. It'll make you feel better. If you've got questions for next week, please put them in the comments. If you're going to be in Melbourne or Sydney in March, as I mentioned last week, Ragdoll have some tour dates coming up. It would be awesome if you would come out to the shows because we have a new single which is currently being mastered which is really exciting to talk about the mixes are done it's being mastered as i speak it will be uh, going into the slipstream for release hopefully by the end of the month fingers toes eyes everything crossed for that so you're going to hear some new ragdoll tunes very soon but until then let's get into this week's questions <laughs> Uh, no, I can't play cello. <laughs> Two, the cello doesn't work very well. It's kind of broken. It's got a broken string and there's something wrong with the bridge. I got that, I want to say maybe when I was 17 or 18. It was a gift from my dad, whose friend was like a music wholesaler. They supplied budget instruments to schools and that kind of thing. And, you know, they would always have instruments which came shipped from wherever they were shipped from, kind of busted. And that cello was a busted cello. And uh, my dad, being the genius he is, when it comes to working with these kind of things, managed to fix it up pretty good. And we got it working. And I think I played it for all of about seven minutes and got discouraged with it because playing a fretless bowed string instrument is really, really hard. So to all the cellists out there, mass respect for what you guys do. Uh, I have no idea how you do it. I'm just a hack who plays guitar. But, you know, maybe I could do a video where I run that through the axe effects and kind of make some noisy drone music with it. If that's something you guys would like to see, let me know. Have I ever tried a Mercury Magnetics Transformer in any of my amps, specifically a rectifier? I haven't. When it comes to those kind of things, uh, I'm a little bit agnostic about it because I like the way my amps sound and the idea that it's like, okay, if I like the way my amp sounds, how am I going to know if I can make it 5% better? It might be 5% better, but it also might be like 5% worse. And I think with a lot of these things with like kind of tubes, transformers, caps, we're talking about small differences here. Uh, you know, you could just if you own two guitars and you own a Strat and a Les Paul, that's going to be make way more of a difference than, you know, what particular brand of 12AX7 you have in V3. I know people are going to disagree with me, but those kind of things are like small percentage differences. But I will say that they do add up. You know, if you have small percentage differences in like 10 different places in an amplifier, that's obviously going to add up massively. That's why a lot of the time... Uh, with particular vintage amps by the same manufacturer, there's so much component drift that uh, they sound considerably different. But no, I've never tried the Mercury Magnetic stuff. I've heard it's great. I have a few friends who have upgraded their like Marshalls with them and they rave about them. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's something I've just kind of never explored. I think my amps sound fine as it is. I've used them on lots of recordings and I like the way they sound. If you don't like the way your amp sounds, uh, you could always just try a different amp. That's another way to do it. Or get a graphic EQ pedal, put it in front of your amp, change the pre-gain structure or put it in the effects loop. Change stuff like that. That's probably going to be a more cost-effective way to do it as well. segue has something slightly to do with this next question soloing with both a major and a minor tonality over a particular chord progression i would direct you to the video that i did about the dominant pentatonic scale last week or the week before where you know if you're playing over a chord progression like a major and f major the f major kind of implies that it's in the key of a minor so really that progression is kind of shifting from a major tonality, which is going to sound brighter, to a minor tonality, which is going to sound a little bit darker. So you have this kind of shifting mood. Uh, you know, the Ragdoll song Heaven Above does that. Mm -hmm. 
we do it in Shine as well with the, the melody kind of oscillates between having a major third and a minor third, depending on where we are in the song. So uh, it's really, really cool stuff. If you haven't watched any of Jacob Collier's stuff where he's talking about brightness in music, it's amazing. Go and check that out. And obviously Adam Neely's channel is amazing to check out. I think he talks about that as well. I might be confusing the two guys. Uh, they're both guys who are very good at music. So uh, go and listen to them about it. And uh, if you want to see a hack talk about it, go and check out my video on the dominant pentatonic. Man, I'm digging this strat, uh, especially with this. This is the Axe FX Tweed Deluxe model. Uh, Skull frets, that was the next question. I don't think they make it easier for you to play faster, but they definitely give you like a better grip on the string on a Strat. You know, if you like this kind of stuff. <laughs> then Scallop Frets might be for you. If you think it's going to turn you into Yngwie Malmsteen, uh, it's probably going to make that harder, unfortunately. But I really love the way this guitar sounds and really nice mellow pickups on this. The YGM signature models are, I have to say, they're pretty good. You might want to check one out if you're uh, chasing that kind of thing that he does. Alrighty. The positive grid spark amp thing. As with a lot of this stuff, I can't really pass judgment on it until I try it. I would like to try it because it seems like something which would appeal uh, to a lot of people who watch the channel. You know, there's a lot of people who write to me and say they're very time poor. As in, you know, they don't have hours to sit there tweaking gear. They just want something they can plug into, get the sound they hear on a song and practice the song. And in that respect, I'm pretty keen to check it out. I also, you know, teach guitar as well. So I have a lot of younger students uh, looking for similar solutions on a budget. So uh, if it lives up to the hype, it looks like it could be a pretty cool little product. And uh, yeah, I hopefully can get my hands on one at some point. If I do, you guys will see a video with it. My favorite Yngwie J. Malmsteen album. Uh, the first Yngwie album I heard, I think, was Trilogy. I still remember the moment when I was sitting uh, in front of my dad's stereo and he put that album on and said, listen to this. And he put on... <laughs> You don't remember, I'll never forget. So I'm kind of partial to Trilogy, but I also like Eclipse as well. This is totally the wrong sound. Let me find that Inde sound I dialed in a couple of days ago with the video with it. I think it's this. Uh, I really, really like uh, Bedroom Eyes on that album. That is a great song. Great playing by the rest of the band on it. Such a groovy song. <laughs> There's a lot of delay and reverb on there. So yeah, let's go with um let's go with Eclipse. I think Eclipse kind of takes a cake for me, but any of his first five albums I would highly recommend. Uh he was just playing playing on another level in that whole era. Somebody asked me about Indonesian made guitars and my opinion on them and the quality. Uh I can maybe base this off two Indonesian made guitars I've played, one of which is the Dean that you guys have seen on the channel. And I was really, really impressed with that. Like ebony fingerboard, all the kind of finishing touches on everything was really, really clean. There weren't any like file marks on the binding. The neck felt good. The fret ends were nice. So I think sort of the higher end Indonesian stuff, uh, they're doing a really, really good job. Uh, somebody that I know has a Solar Explorer style guitar, I think as well. So I'm going to try and borrow that because I think those are made in Indonesia at the moment. So that would be a cool thing. Uh, to check out and I can just put it in drop C and just chug away because hey that's what you're meant to do on those things right so yeah 
the couple of guitars that I've tried, I've been reasonably impressed with. I've been very impressed with the Dean. And the other guitar I tried, which I think was like a Harley Benton Telly or something, was was decent enough. It was pretty good for the money. Uh, there were a few things with it. But uh, the Dean the Dean that I've tried, definitely a winner. Well done. And what else? We got a couple of other questions. You can see me looking down here. I've set up my iPad for like an auto cue thing. So I apologize about that. My thoughts on the Axe FX2. Amazing. The AX8 is amazing. The Axe FX2 is amazing. They uh, don't sound any worse because the FM3, which is out now, uh, which is a very nice thing to see. And the Axe FX3 are out. I'm using an Axe FX3 for everything that I do now. And I love it. But honestly, if I didn't have this, I'd still be playing the AX8, which is uh, using the same kind of stuff that the Axe FX2 has. In fact, I think the Axe FX2 got a firmware upgrade to incorporate some of the modeling algorithms from this. So I think there's still an incredible deal. Uh, you know, people have been touring the world with those things for like the past... 10 years and uh yeah they do the job definitely definitely couldn't recommend it highly enough um if you can't afford an axe fx3 if you want all the functionality you want dual amps get an axe fx2 they're still amazing and it has stuff like tone match and the ir capture so very very nice right there <laughs> This is more an observation than a question, but uh, I mentioned Alice in Chains last week and somebody mentioned that they love Alice in Chains, but they also love Pink Floyd and that it was a little bit odd to like a band like Pink Floyd when you're a metalhead. And just that thing, like, I'm a metalhead. Uh, I kind of get as like, it's something to attach your identity to, but only listening to metal, you're missing out on so much great music. You know, the reasons that I love good heavy metal or good rock music are the same reasons that I love great pop music or great soul or great modern classical music, uh, great anything. You know, there's these uh, elements of music which I think are universal and then you have this stylistic layer over the top. And, you know, some people are going to be really put off by certain stylistic things, but, you know, probably the reason you love metal and you love Pink Floyd is that they're often exploring taboo subjects they're often exploring really kind of the darker side of the human psyche rather than just like let's go get lit you know there's uh there's a lot of interesting things there uh guest appearance by the cat as well just getting up turning around going back to sleep as you do uh, but yeah that's probably why you know there are these common elements in there and uh you know i'm highly distrustful of anybody who doesn't love pink floyd especially if you play guitar because you need to listen to david gilmore what he does is just incredible and when we're talking about expression he's one of the kings when it comes to those kind of things so oh yeah just a little observation there you know uh, the the classic saying there's two, there's two types of music good music and everything else and i would uh subscribe to that kind of uh philosophy uh, rather than there's metal and there's this and there's this and there's this and there's this i guess at some level that's kind of important but uh, just just dig what you dig all right any other questions? Oh, one question about setting up backline. Uh, yeah, I really should do a video about that, like the idiot's guide to backline because I'm an idiot and I often have to set up backline and PA for a lot of gigs. And, uh, you know, there's kind of like a survival guide probably lurking in there. So I should do something about that. Uh, on that note as well, if there is any extra content you guys would like to see, uh, we have this tour coming up. I've got a few new pieces of gear coming in. Uh, for that particular tour, which uh, I have to pick one of those up pretty soon, actually, which is exciting. So you'll see a few reviews around that. But if there's anything about the recording process of the latest single, if there's anything about touring, uh, the ins and outs of you know how you put things out and how you prepare for a tour and how you book a tour, uh, I would love to do some videos like that. If you guys have any specific things you would like me to cover in those videos, as always, let me know in the comments or write to me if there's specific things. And that wraps up our Q&A for this week. Please put your questions for next week in the comments below. Have an excellent week and don't forget, play an A chord, you'll feel better.